Hi, I'm Lisa Nichols, and today I'm going to show you how to use a rotary evaporator to quickly remove some solvent from a solution. So here is our instrument. We'll be attaching our flask to this area and heating it in a water bath. That will boil the solvent and turn it into a gas, which will then move over and contact this yellow area. That's our condenser, and the yellow liquid is actually car antifreeze, and it's connected to our chiller that we have underneath. So it's gonna be running cold antifreeze through that condenser, which means that the hot gas is gonna contact it, turn into a liquid, and be collected in that big bulb, which is our receiving flask. And then what's important with the rotary evaporator is that you have the whole system under a vacuum. So here's our vacuum aspirator, which will reduce the pressure inside the instrument. First, I'll connect my flask to that bulbous glass piece, which is called a bump trap and we'll connect it with a plastic clip. You do want to make sure that your flask is no more than half full or else it will bump. Next, I'll turn on the Rotovap and then turn the rotation dial to start rotating the flask. Rotation makes evaporation faster and it also makes it less likely to bump. You can then take that joystick looking arm and lower the flask into the water. And you do want to make sure that you don't lower it too much because you definitely don't want the joint where that little plastic clip is to be in the water. Uh, then you can turn on the vacuum. And even when the vacuum is going, normally you start with an open system. So this right here, you can hear it's open. You're gonna turn it 90 degrees to close the system. And then the um, pressure is starting to lower inside of the instrument. At this point, you then just wait for that solvent to evaporate. There's no set amount of time for this step. It depends on the boiling point of the solvent. It also depends on the uh, temperature of the bath and how good, how low your pressure is inside of the instrument. Um, so I'm gonna speed up the time here, but you basically just wait until it looks like the solvent level has reduced a lot. It's also really helpful to know whether you're expecting to get a solid or a liquid. If you think you're gonna get a solid, you can just wait until solid starts forming. Um, if, it's, if you're expecting a liquid, that's much more difficult. You just want to wait until the solvent level has dropped quite a bit um, and then you think like it's not reducing anymore. So let's go back to normal time. Uh, for this example, I am actually expecting a solid to form, so I would just keep on evaporating until I see that solid. Whoa, that was surprising. Uh, so once I get the solid, then just let it go for another minute or two to fully dry out. Here's what it might look like if you were expecting a liquid. Uh, it's much less dramatic. The solvent level just drops and gets lower and lower and eventually it looks like it's not changing anymore. And uh, sometimes it's even really hard to tell that there's any liquid left at all. It might look completely empty. And you might not know that there's any liquid left over until you stop rotating. And at that point, it then pools down to the bottom. When the solvent is removed and you're done, you're then gonna just do all the steps in reverse. First, turn the stopcock to open it up to the atmosphere, turn off the vacuum, raise the flask out of the water bath, and stop the rotation. And at that point, you can take the flask off.